Namaste. I'm Kash Indigo Ray. Welcome back to my channel and <sighs> happy almost Samhain. I am so happy to be celebrating Samhain if you can't tell by my little thing that I made here. Um, yeah. So let's just get right into it. I just wanted to share with you some Samhain greetings. Um, it is Sunday, October 27th? 8th. October 28th. So Samhain is coming up this Wednesday. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. And yeah, I'm just gonna share a couple of ideas with you for um, what this time of the season in the turning of the wheel represents and what you can do to make sure you have a really special one or some things that you can include in your sat one. I'm looking for cats. <laughs> if you see me turning around, it's because my cats are curious about the candles and stuff over there. So I'm just kind of paying attention to make sure they don't set themselves on fire. <laughs> Um, so the history of Samhain, I'm going to really, really brief this out because you can look this up, this stuff up anywhere. Um, Samhain, spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, uh, looks like Samhain, but it is pronounced Samhain. It is a Celtic word and it relates to the veil thinning. So the um, this time of the year is thought to be a time when the a veil between the worlds is thinnest, um, comparable only to the time we celebrated at Beltane or Beltane, which is also a Celtic word, a uh, Celtic name for the holiday season. And um, Roman Catholics celebrate this time as All Hallows Eve, and in the Americas, we call it Halloween. If you are in the Southern Hemisphere right now, you are about to celebrate Bialtine. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere, because of the, the time difference and the equator difference, we are celebrating Samhain. So Samhain is a time when we, um, we can make contact with the other side very easily. That's what's meant by the veil thinning. So, this time of year is a time when um, ancestors cross over, where folks that are leaving this plane can, can cross over more easily and can return to visit you. Um, I talked before in another video about the movie, the uh, animated movie called um, Coco, which is so great and it's so about all of this stuff. And in that movie, the ancestor that wants to cross over and visit his family from the land of the, the dead, Dia de Muertos, in, um, in uh, Hispanic culture they celebrate it as uh, the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, um, and he could not cross over because there was no photo of him on the family altar. So this is a time of year where um, if you want to make contact with your ancestors, it's believed that it's best to put things out that represent them. So in the Latino culture, in uh, African uh, religions, voodoo, hoodoo, um, yoruba, ifa, uh, condomble, um, santeria, <sighs> uh, Native American uh, indigenous tribes, have a lot of a have a much stronger connection to venerating our ancestors and staying in connection with our ancestors as how we carry on the traditions of being human and being on this planet and how to uh, take care of this planet and so they really make a point of staying connected to your ancestors so this is a time when if that's not in your practice, it's a good time to start it. If that's something you're curious about, not saying that you should be doing that or you shouldn't be doing that. Um, now, one thing that you can do um, to do that is to set up an altar um, for your ancestors. So there's two camps. <laughs> there's a camp that says you can put items that represent or belonged to your ancestors 
wherever you worship, wherever your altar is set up, wherever that is. Um, you can put pictures up on, in a collage all over the wall um, in an area or you can have a very special place just for passed on loved ones that nothing else comes into contact with because there is some belief in not having the land of the living cross over into the land of the dead. So I, I kind of do both things. So I no longer keep my ancestral um, memorabilia on my working altar. I did for, for quite a long time. And then just recently, I think I talked about this, that I moved them on top of one of my uh, speakers, my subwoofer, or whatever that's called, um, because they're very musical. My ancestry is very musical, and I thought that it would actually be a fitting tribute to them to put them on top of my speaker so that they get to receive the vibration of the music. Um, and I have a watch that belonged to my grandfather because I don't have a picture of him. I have a vial of um, vodka for my other grandfather, my paternal grandfather. I have my ma my maternal grandmother's um, a brooch that belonged to her, and I have my paternal grandmother's um, a ring that belonged to her. Um, I also have photographs, but the photographs I don't put up because I'm in them <laughs> and I'm living. Um, but I just have them as like something that I keep close to me. Um, but they know that those represent them and I also have ancestral stones. So if you have pictures of your ancestors, you could put pictures of them up along with the items that are representing them and you could just kind of let them know, hey, I love and respect and I want to venerate you. I want to actually uh, use this time to establish this connection with you and to welcome you into my practice in this way. Um, do you agree to um, to be present with me in my journey and um, we can just uh, begin to have dialogue? It doesn't have to be anything deep. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. I literally said, hi, grandma, <laughs> you know, hi, grandpa. Um, I love you. I miss you. I'm placing these things here for you just to allow you to have entry into my, my consciousness and for you to know that I am... Um, seeking to connect with you. You are welcome here. And I do have some ancestors that have made themselves much more present than others, but I still maintain a space for them in case they wanted to talk with me. Mm. Because I don't have anything that belonged to my great grandmothers, um, I have ancestral stones that I got uh, that was given to me from a friend who traveled to Sedona um, to represent them. So um, that's one thing that the veil is about, the thinning of the veil. Veil today is the other time the veil thins. Um, and veil today has a lot to do with the fae and with the fairy part of the veil thinning, the, um, the more magical um, uh, entities coming from different realms to visit this realm. Bugs. Knock it off. Sorry. <laughs> Dogs. Um, but this time of year, you can also connect with uh, fairy spirits as well. Absolutely, you could definitely connect with them. Um, you could, could connect with angelic entities. You could, if you work with daemons, if that's your path. Um, I don't particularly do that, so I can't really instruct you in doing that. But um, it's also a time of letting go. So it's a good time to kind of call up what your experience has been up to this point in the year and determine what things are no longer serving you. It's a good time to do shadow work. I actually have a, um, a shadow, a stone that I use for shadow work. Um, I don't have it right here in front of me, but um, it's a stone that I use to connect with with traveling so I'll do a meditation and I'll kind of go in and 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 look at parts of myself that are in various states of healing that need various parts of release um, put the stone under my pillow and kind of use that as a, as a directive to do that so this time of year is great for that burning rates are amazing for letting go of what you don't want in your path anymore Samhain is considered to be the witch's new year so it's a great time to kind of establish 
what you are letting go of or not establish to determine what you're letting go of so that at Yule when you set intentions for for the next calendar year that's coming so those are the differences right so the the Sabbaths follow the the lunar cycle and the um, am I saying that right <laughs> um, Samhain is the time when we embark on the witch's new year. It's the, it's the last harvest, but it's also a time of deadening. It's right before we go into the winter heralding time. And it's believed that at Yule, um, we are giving birth to ourselves again, or the goddess is giving birth to us again. She's in gestation. She's about to um, give birth to the new flowering of the earth. So. I like to release stuff at Samhain and then call in stuff at Yule. So to do a release, all you have to do is decide what things you want to let go of. I say don't do too many because it gets cloudy in your brain and you kind of start to lose focus. Oh, and this, oh, and this, oh, and this. So maybe look at bugs, hush. Maybe look at two to three things that you want to let go of in your experience. One to three things. Um, I don't know what they're, they're going to be for me just yet right now, but knowing that my year was about the Empress, I can already imagine there are definitely some things that have been coming, coming full circle and full cycle for me to be released. So you want to set your altar however you're going to decorate it for Samhain. Mine has been decorated this whole time. I have two. I have my working altar that's got some Samhain things added to it. And then I've got my Sabbath altar um, out in the uh, shared space in the living room uh, so that my husband and I can enjoy it while we watch TV and I light all the candles. We've got the blinking witch house and I get all into the decor. I should have taken, I might put some pictures on Instagram. I'll do that. I'll put pictures on Instagram because I get super into it. We've got like a dancing pumpkin, pumpkin cat and a twerking mommy I, I get all into it so um, set your altar how you're gonna want it um, and then light an incense that feels like this time for you that feels like autumnal so I go for things like um, uh, cinnamon and nutmeg and really spicy scents um, fiery scents uh, what's another great one um, you can buy incense that literally is about the autumn time. Um, but if you want to make something loose, I can post a recipe. But I would say start with a base that's um, pretty light, like uh, um, what would be a good, a good base? Maybe like some rosemary. You could add a little mugwort in there because mugwort's right for dreaming. And then toss a little uh, cinnamon into it. You can grind up some nutmeg into it. You really start like creating a nice little aromatic scent. You could squeeze a couple drops of orange or, or zest a little bit of orange into it. Grind it all together in your mortar and pestle. And then um, you're gonna burn that on top of a, a charcoal. If you just want something basic, I would say you could get cinnamon, you could get clove. Um, clove is a great one. Um, I've seen honey sticks from, from him. Um, Nag Champa is always basic, cedar, anything that's very like earthy, right? Because we're this is a time of the earth is dying, the earth is turning over, that's why all the leaves are brown. Burn your incense, state your intention to release like what you're letting go of and then burn it in your cauldron with your incense let that that fire element that transmutes and transforms things into different things <laughs> takes the dark and molds it and eats it up and spits it out as, as something to be released once you get that beautiful ash burn off you can go outside either that same night or the next day cast it out on the wind um, and let the winds of change take it. Um, mm. Okay. Uh, we have talked about the new year. We talked about Beltane being the cross. Okay, so some other ways to celebrate Samhain. Uh, a dumb supper is a pretty popular one. So what a dumb supper is, is you're gonna cook a meal that's representative of this time for you. Uh, 
I will probably make some kind of vegetarian roast um, and you know uh, root vegetables that are very harvest vegetable squashes zucchinis um, uh, anything kind of like rooty like that potatoes sweet potatoes um, and then you set your table not just for yourself and whoever living is gonna represent uh, and uh, be able to acknowledge this time but you also set a place for whoever you're asking to visit so let's say I wanted to in invite one of my grandmothers to visit um, you set a place for the ancestor that you're inviting to have supper with you and the dumb part of it is that you don't speak so you eat in silence in Eastern traditions eating in silence is about mindfulness it's about allowing yourself to drop away from talking and to just be in the space of, of allowing, feeling, being present with what is and not needing to fill it with so much conversation about it. Um, turn off the TV. Um, maybe you could play like light music if it's kind of atmospheric and in the background, not a whole lot of singing. I would play like instrumental music if you want something like that, just to, to have some noise in the home but it's important that you're actually creating that silent space to welcome in the ancestor and ask them for something. Ask them what you want. Hey, I'm really needing help with moving to the next phase in my life, in my career. Can you share with me, maybe there's something I'm missing that I need to do, something that I need to be tapped into or made aware of in my path. Um, do a tarot reading for what actually wants to be um, connected with for you or something that's coming up in your new year and actually tap into that energy and ask your ancestors to help you with that and then welcome them to the table to come and sit and eat with you now you're not gonna sit at the table trying to talk to them you're allowing them to visit and share their energy with you so if you're gonna have another person sitting at the table with you make sure that they respect the holiday that they understand what they're doing and they're not gonna fill it with like eye rolling and like you know talking and whatever that they're gonna hold that space with you because it's important also because that veil is thin for 24 hours um, the next day you want to make sure that if whoever you've invited if you don't want them to, to be there I mean the belief is that they leave but I also say that it's great to go through your house and sage so that anything else that crossed over the veil when that space was open for them, you make sure that you ask them to leave as well. A good practice, if you're new to all of this, inviting ancestors and spirits to visit with you, there's no harm in casting a circle. There's no harm in casting a magic circle to create a barrier, an energetic barrier between you and anything else that's gonna come across that veil. Um, your your light body is only going to attract what you allow in. So if you specifically want to keep out dark entity or dark entity entities, um, if you have that one ancestor that you didn't get along with, create that space around yourself. Say who you're inviting and who uh, and, and the rest is staying out. Or if you are invoking guides and you want to leave that a little bit open, I'm going to invoke fairy guides and and welcome them in I'm also going to cast a magic circle and make sure that nothing else crosses you can set um, some people try to trap demons <laughs> I'm not doing any of that stuff but you can just set an energetic magic circle around yourself to create a veil and it's great to know what element you resonate most strongly with and what color we'll talk about that maybe later going into the year but when you cast your circle you want to visualize the color so for me it's indigo I'm gonna visualize an indigo um, bright light extending out of my wand as I cast my circle and I picture a ring of blue fire going around me and going around my house arm yourself with crystals I'm gonna be wearing my um, my uh, my empath stone to keep out um, any negative forces or energies that are kind of lost or people that cross over that are kind of you know connecting to psychic people because you can feel them that happens too. not to scare you but you just create the, the boundary and the barrier that you want 
Okay, so after, like I said, after your dumb supper, you could, um, you know, work on whatever intentions you've set. You could do a meditation to just kind of really tap yourself into those energies. I probably am gonna pass out candy to kids. <laughs> Um, I, I'm not saying I'm having a dumb supper, by the way. I don't know that I'm having a dumb supper. Um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in the moment and allow whatever happens happen for me. But um, I am gonna pass out candy to kids. I'm gonna keep it light. I'm gonna keep the balance. It doesn't have to be so serious just because it's Samhain. Um, Speaking of which, crafting. You can craft and have a lot of fun with that. I've got a couple. If you see a pumpkin in the background there, I've got this little sugar pumpkin that I got both of these from the pumpkin patch um, my husband and I are going to design them and make faces or whatever we're gonna do I'm, I might try to cut into that one that's a little bit bigger and stuff some like battery operated lights or something inside um, make a cute little face I'm not for the like let's make some dark scary face I'm probably gonna make something cute like emoji like a little heart mouth or something a little apple mouth I like the uh, in anime when they have the little apple mouth and their eyes are really big so I might try to do something like that I'm not really that great at carving pumpkins but I'm gonna give it a shot I haven't carved a pumpkin in many years so I might do that um, earlier it's also my anniversary uh, my three-year wedding anniversary or my three-year hen fasting anniversary so my husband and I are probably gonna have some kind of nice dinner eat candy um, and um, we will have de decorated our pumpkins already, but pass out kid, pass out candy to the kids and in, in our neighborhood, um, and I'll make time definitely to hang out with my familiars and do some kind of meditation with them. Another crafting idea is you can make yourself a crown. So I made this little harvest crown back at um, Lunasa. All the little Lunasa colors and. That's a, a pomegranate and a little pumpkin and flowers and pine cones and I just got a bunch of uh, floral decor literally from the Dollar Tree and um, I took a headband and I used a hot glue gun and just placed it on there how I want it on the little headband. See, it's literally just a headband and this doesn't take very long to do. And I've been wearing it all season just as I just am feeling like that you can wear it when you're cooking um, with intention when you're doing your kitchen witchery if you're like making stuff I'm probably gonna make some kind of like I just talked to you about I'll probably make some kind of um, incense to burn on Samhain and okay so speaking of making stuff um, some foods to make would be pumpkin pie, if you like sweet potato pie, um, cinnamon apple muffins. Oh, I'll probably, I, I'm not good at making muffins. Um, I would love to make a scone, but I don't know. I'll probably try to make some kind of cinnamon apple um, tarty type thing. Um, spiced cider, if you like ci apple cider, you could take apples and cut them up. Red apples are the, the best. I love to do it with Fuji apples. Cut up the apples and just boil them and let them start to get really sweet and you can add in um, honey and nutmeg and cinnamon and clove and just make it really really spicy and yummy and um, if you're a person who drinks alcohol I've kind of not really been doing that but if you're a person who drinks alcohol you could add whiskey to it and make it really spicy. Jack Daniels actually works really well with that spiced apple cider. Um, alternatively, you can go to the grocery store and they literally sell apple cider. Um, I know Trader Joe's sells like the big um, like bottle of apple cider that's already spiced and just heat that stuff up, put it in a mug and, and enjoy it. I have like special um, um, mugs. They're like, um, what are they? Uh, clay. They're clay um, goblets and I have two and I usually break those out at Sabbath's and for whatever thing that I decide to make my husband and I drink out of the uh, goblets because I think it's kind of neat. Um, so yeah those are some foods and things you can make. And of course the last thing you could do is you can dress up. Why not right? 
Um, we are going to do a Halloween costume contest at my job, and I usually don't participate in stuff like that, but you know what? I thought, why not? Why not this year? Um, I'm at a new job, and I like all my people, and I was like, you know what? Why not do that and have some fun and be a little silly? So I am wearing a costume that I've actually never done before, oddly. I'm going to be an elf. Um, kind of Lord of the Ringsy, but also just kind of woodland, sylvan, um, earthy elf. Um, so I will take pictures and I will, excuse me, we'll post those on my Instagram for you uh, if you care, if you're interested at all. Um, I'm not going to tell you ideas for what you should be for, <laughs> for Zow and you can, everybody will figure that thing out for themselves. But it's actually really fun. I once did a deep dive into all of the um, Halloween lore and um, where like some of the customs come from, like wearing masks and begging for candy and all this kind of stuff. And it's kind of really weird. <laughs> it's really weird what old like English and Celtic people used to do. <laughs> I won't rehash it because it's kind of long, but just do a Google search for Halloween, the um, origin of Halloween uh, customs, and you'll find a lot of stuff that's really kind of quirky and weird and kind of fun. But um, yeah, that's it. So I want to say happy Samhain to you if I don't make a video on Samhain. Um, I personally stay up past midnight. I stay up past the witching hour because I love to just kind of make contact and meditate and allow that energy in. And um, if I don't post anything on Wednesday, I will be back to celebrate post New Year with you and uh, we can talk about Yule. I hope everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful weekend and a beautiful day and a happy Sunday. And I love you all very much. Thank you for sharing your space with me. Namaste, blessed be, and ashe.